Hi there. Welcome to the third video in the series. In the last two episodes, we looked at the project settings and the first three scenes in the project. If you missed them, check out the development playlist. Now, let's look at the drawing layers used in the game. Godot's canvas layers will help us draw the graphics in the game, the game sprites, tile sets, heads up display, and text messages, and stack them on top of each other with the correct vertical order. Canvas layers can be used for many different things, but we mainly use them to keep the game layers and interfaces organized. In the demo, we'll assign a layer value to each of the canvases, and this value will tell us which layers are drawn on top and which are drawn in the background. The layers with the smallest number will be drawn first, and the layers with the larger numbers will be drawn on top. Our first canvas layer, the pause layer, we've mentioned already in a previous episode. This is a simple layer that's displayed while the game is paused. Nothing fancy, it's just a label for now. One thing to keep in mind here is that this layer is not paused even when the player pauses the game. This is represented by the process mode of Always in the Node Inspector panel on the right side of the editor. And because we're using that mode, we could easily add a full overlay screen for this pause layer. A screen with a menu of buttons for things like opening the game settings, viewing a map, viewing leaderboards, or quitting the game. You can also see that pausing the game stops the player timer, but still allows the total timer to continue running. The second canvas layer holds all of the heads-up details that overlay in the in-game graphics. We broke down the HUD components even further into three parts to make things easier to expand later. The first component is the health panel. This allows us to show the player their important stats like character health at a glance. In this demo, it only displays the remaining health for the player before they get a game over. Later, if we wanted to add more stats like stamina or a mana pool, we could easily add them to this area of the HUD. The second component is a group of basic UI pop-up panels that appear during gameplay. These panels let us display simple text tips and messages to the player, including the in-game messages as well as the game over screen and windscreen. This icon shows that the panels are not visible when the scene starts. We'll use code to show and hide these panels, but sometimes it's useful to see the nodes in the editor, so we can turn these on temporarily if we want to see what things look like. We just have to remember to turn them back off. The third component of the HUD, the debug panel, is mostly helpful while developing the game, but for a finished game it would either be removed completely or made into a setting that can be turned on and off. All of these panels use simple label nodes that print text to the screen, and each can be dressed up and styled accordingly to fit the needs of the game. For this demo, I've set the theme overrides to give the panels a color background and to give some of the text labels some drop shadow. The only additional callout is the message panel, where we have the timer node. This allows us to show this specific panel for five seconds before automatically closing the panel. We'll see that code later when we dive into the player triggers in episode five. Like the pause layer, the various HUD layers do not pause when the player pauses the game, so we have a process mode set to always on this canvas. There are a few exceptions, but most of the children nodes will inherit that process node from this canvas. The next canvas layer is the level layer container. In the editor, it doesn't look like it contains much. However, when the game starts up, this layer is where the player and the level runtime data will live. The entire tile map and all of the enemies, items, and triggers will be here as well. In effect, this is the main container of the game tree where the player actually controls their character in the game world. This layer will actually be paused when the player decides to pause the game. This is because the process mode on this layer is set to pausable. In episode 5, we'll learn all about the stuff that goes into this level layer and its related components and all of the child nodes it contains. The last canvas to discuss here is the parallax background. You can make some really neat multi-layer scrolling backgrounds with this node if you're willing to play around with the settings. However, for this demo, we are simply using the single background image and setting the parallax properties to make it scroll when the player moves their character. We'll simply scroll at different rates for horizontal and vertical directions to get the very simple parallax effect that we want. To do it, we'll open up the parallax background scene using this icon in the scene tree along the left side of the editor. That will open up the scene where we'll find the parallax layer node. On that node, we'll use the inspector to set the motion scale to two different values, one for horizontal and one for vertical. That covers the canvases, but before we finish up, I wanted to give a shout out to the artist Anzimas for their wonderful pixel art and asset packs. In this demo, I've used a few of their images from the Gothic Vania town pack. 
you can check them out on Twitch.io. And if you're looking for quality pixel art assets for your next Godot game, you might just find what you're looking for. Anyway, hopefully this episode gives you a good sense of the game's canvas layers used in the project. Next, in episode 4, we'll dive into the player scene and the many mechanics and techniques that we use to allow the player to move around and interact with the game world. There's a lot to cover in that episode, so I might even break it down into several smaller videos to keep it easier to watch. If you found this interesting or helpful and want to see more, please consider hitting the like button. It really helps us get more exposure on YouTube and keep things going. Drop us a comment and let us know what other development and gaming topics you want to cover in other videos. Thanks for watching!